You might think you know the story of angels, but what I'm about to reveal will challenge everything you believed. At the heart of one of the greatest celestial controversies, a surprising figure emerges, Michael, the Archangel. Against all expectations, he is not just a divine messenger, but the guardian of a secret that could alter your perception of good and evil. Are you ready to uncover the hidden truth behind the sacred pages? Stay with us and unravel in a few minutes mysteries that defy centuries of beliefs. This revelation will not only satisfy your curiosity, but might also offer a transformative understanding of the eternal struggle between light and darkness. Don't miss this unique opportunity. Michael, the Archangel, emerges in the pages of the Bible with an aura of mystery and power. Unique among his peers, he is identified in the book of Jude, verse 9, as the Supreme Archangel. The term Archangel, with its prefix Arch, suggests a natural leader, a superior celestial guide. This position elevates Michael above all other angelic beings, establishing him as the sovereign prince of the heavens, a figure of unquestionable authority in the celestial hierarchy. This magnificent angel, mentioned in Jude 1.9, stands out for his direct interaction with opposing forces. During a confrontation with the devil over the fate of Moses' body, Michael, instead of uttering harsh accusations, opts for a divine rebuke. The Lord rebuke you. This passage, quoted from the King James translation, underscores the unique character of Michael, the only one to bear the title of Archangel. This title, derived from the word Arch, signals Michael's prominence, placing him at the apex of the angelic order. Interestingly, the name Michael carries with it an intriguing question, who is like God? Many, in naming their children Michael, may not be aware of this profound meaning. Imagine if, upon hearing this name, people were instantly inspired to reflect on divinity and greater purpose. Often in biblical history, we see men inclined to venerate celestial messengers, straying from the true object of worship. In this context, the name Michael acts as a subtle reminder, an invitation to direct our gaze and admiration towards the Almighty God. This exclusivity is emphasized in the Bible, which never mentions archangels in the plural, but refers only to Michael as such. In the Old Testament, Michael appears as a defender and protector of the nation of Israel, he is described as the prince of God's chosen people, acting as a kind of prime minister in the divine governance of the cosmos. His role extends beyond mere celestial administration, as he is the executor of divine judgment. The importance of Michael is vividly illustrated in Daniel 12.1, where he is described as the great prince who protects the children of your people. The text speaks of a period of unparalleled tribulation, yet assures salvation for those who are written in the book. This passage underscores Michael's critical role as a guardian and savior in times of crisis. Michael notably assumes the role of guardian and protector for all those aligned under divine aegis. In Daniel, he's referred to as Michael, your prince, highlighting his prominent position and responsibility. As written in Daniel 10.21, Michael stands almost as a solitary bulwark against opposing forces, a pillar of divine truth and justice. He is depicted as the divine messenger of laws and judgments, a role he performs with zeal and authority. Michael's role reaches a dramatic climax in the book of Revelation 12-7-12, where he emerges as the leader of the heavenly army in the epic war against Satan, the great dragon, and his demons. This cosmic battle, marking the end of times, is a confrontation of universal proportions, a clash between good and evil. The Bible assures us that in this final battle, Michael and his angels will confront and defeat the evil forces. Hell will tremble, heaven will rejoice and celebrate, a promise of victory and redemption. Satan, often identified as the devil, 
once known as Lucifer, the son of the morning, was expelled from heaven for his rebellion. Despite seeming to have achieved successes in various battles throughout history, the final destiny of this fallen being is sealed, a definitive defeat and the loss of his power. The forces of darkness which he leads will be annihilated by the omnipotence of God. The existence of this conflict in God's perfect universe is a puzzle that intrigues many. The Apostle Paul, in 2 Thessalonians 2.7, refers to this as the mystery of iniquity. Although we may not fully understand divine designs, we know that the fall of the angels occurred due to their rebellion against God. As written in 2 Peter 2.4, these angels were condemned to Tartarus, reserved for judgment. Jude, in his text, attributes guilt directly to the angels, stating that they abandoned their original state and now face a destiny of darkness and eternal imprisonment. Lucifer's rebellion against God, followed by the desertion of approximately a third of the angels, represents an unprecedented cataclysm in the history of creation. This event is situated at an enigmatic point in cosmic chronology. Between the dawn of creation and the infamous entry of Satan into the Garden of Eden, the focus here is not so much on the creation of angels, but on the moment of their fall. It seems unlikely that the angelic rebellion occurred before Adam and Eve were placed in the Garden of Eden, suggesting that, until then, all creation, including the angels, was considered good. How long Adam and Eve enjoyed peace in Eden before the angelic corruption and the subsequent temptation of man and woman is a question that persists, an unfathomable mystery. The narrative of Lucifer's fall is vivid and detailed. In Isaiah 14 to 12, 14, the text describes Lucifer's arrogance and boundless ambition aspiring to a position equal or superior to that of God. This passage is a powerful portrayal of unchecked pride leading to downfall. Before his rebellion, Lucifer was an angel of light, a creature of unparalleled beauty and profound wisdom. Ezekiel 28-12-17 paints a picture of Lucifer in all his original glory, adorned with precious stones, blessed with musical talents, and anointed as a protecting cherub. However, his beauty and splendor proved to be his undoing. The passage describes how Lucifer, enamored by his own beauty and wisdom, became corrupt, leading to his expulsion from God's holy mountain. This narrative traces Lucifer's journey from his exalted position in heaven to his transformation into Satan, the adversary. It highlights the insidious nature of vanity and corruption and how even the highest can fall due to arrogance and an excessive quest for power. The belief that Lucifer, in his rebellion against God, dragged with him about a third of the heavenly hosts, marks a pivotal point in cosmic history. This celestial revolt, which began in the higher realms, unfolded upon Earth, and as prophesied, will reach its climax at Armageddon. In this final confrontation, the forces of Christ and his angelic army are foreseen as triumphant. Leslie Miller, in her work All About Angels, highlights a fascinating analogy. In the scriptures, angels are often symbolized by stars. This metaphor provides a deeper context for the reference to Satan as the morning star before his fall. John, in the book of Revelation 12.4, gives us a vivid image of this betrayal, where the dragon, Satan, drags down a third of the stars of heaven a metaphor for the angels who joined his rebellion. This cosmic conflict, though of universal proportions, has Earth as its main stage. It is a remarkable aspect that we, humans with our brief earthly existence, are active participants in this age-old battle. The idea that supernatural entities fight over this small planet in the vast cosmos is undoubtedly fascinating and unsettling. The Garden of Eden, located between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in the Middle East, is pointed out as the place where this titanic struggle began. Since then, the battle between good and evil intensifies, with God's forces progressively gaining ground. 
Satan symbolically suffers increasing defeats, a bruised head in the hands of the divine. At the heart of this cosmic battle stands Michael, the Archangel, a central figure in preparing for the decisive confrontation at Armageddon. Under the authority of God, Michael is organizing his celestial forces for the ultimate battle, an event that will seal the fate of evil and reaffirm divine sovereignty. The last biblical vision is that of heaven, a setting where the eternal conflict approaches its definitive conclusion. Although Satan is, in essence, an already defeated enemy, he has not yet been completely removed from the world stage by God. However, the scriptures assure us that the final destiny of Satan is in the hands of the celestial angels under divine supervision. The second coming of Jesus Christ marks the culmination of this process. Imagine the moment when Michael, the archangel, announces the glorious second coming of Christ. He not only proclaims the good news of Jesus' return, but also heralds the resurrection of those who died in Christ. As described in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. The figure of Daniel interacting with the angel presents Michael in a unique way. During Daniel's prayers, God responds through an angelic messenger who is assisted by Michael, as witnessed in Daniel 10.13. This scene emphasizes Michael's relentless struggle to ensure that God's word reaches its intended recipients. Michael, by his nature and actions, deserves to be regarded as a celestial general. Whenever he is mentioned, there is a connection to some form of spiritual battle. He has a special relationship with Israel, as evidenced in Daniel 10.21 and 12.1, where he is referred to as the protective prince of the nation. In times of unparalleled tribulation, Michael stands as an unwavering defender of God's people, ensuring that those written in the book are saved. Often, the relevance and impact of angels in human affairs are under-recognized, but they are crucial elements in the tapestry of spiritual history. The ceaseless struggle between angels loyal to God and the dark angels aligned with Satan takes on a particularly intense dimension in the book of Daniel. In the Old Testament, Daniel offers us a vivid description of the clash between God's angelic forces and the demonic agents of darkness. During a period of mourning of three weeks, as described in Daniel 10.3, he undertook a rigorous fast, abstaining from pleasant food, meat, wine, and did not anoint himself in a gesture of deep devotion and spiritual quest. While on the banks of the Tigris River, Daniel was approached by an impressive figure, dressed in linen, whose appearance was dazzling and intimidating. With a face that shone like lightning and eyes like flaming torches, the presence of this angelic entity was so overwhelming that only Daniel was able to perceive the vision. The men accompanying him, though they did not see the figure, felt its powerful presence and fled taken by inexplicable fear. Isolated with this celestial figure, Daniel experienced total exhaustion, a reflection of the power emanated by the visitor. It was in this state of weakness and isolation that the angel Gabriel approached him, bringing a direct message from God. Intriguingly, Gabriel revealed that from the beginning of Daniel's prayers, he had been sent in response but his journey was hindered by a demonic prince. This angelic confrontation, a duel between spiritual forces, delayed Gabriel's arrival to Daniel. In the dramatic narrative of Daniel, the arrival of Michael was decisive. His presence enabled the angel with Daniel to continue on his mission without further interruptions. The angel had a crucial message to deliver to reveal to Daniel the divine prophecies about future events, especially those concerning Israel in the last days. However, the intensity of this revelation left Daniel weakened and speechless, 
until the angel touched his lips, revitalizing him and restoring his ability to communicate. After fulfilling his duty, the angel announced to Daniel that he would return to continue the fight against the demonic prince, an ongoing battle between the forces of good and evil. This episode underscores the reality of a ceaseless spiritual conflict occurring beyond human perception. It is crucial to understand that what Daniel experienced was not an illusion or a dream, but an authentic encounter with a celestial being. Daniel was convinced of the reality of this experience. He had dedicated himself to prayer and fasting for three weeks on behalf of the children of Israel, and this rigorous practice had a profound impact. God heard his supplications. The arrival of the angel was a direct response to these prayers, a confirmation that Daniel's request had been answered. This event teaches a vital lesson. Delays in the answers to prayers are not signs of denial. They are part of God's permissive plan, which permeates all aspects of human existence. The angel reassures Daniel, saying, Daniel, greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. And he continues, explaining the resistance faced by the prince of the kingdom of Persia, who detained him for 21 days until Michael intervened. This narrative, recorded in Daniel 10, 11, 14, not only reveals the dynamic interaction between the heavenly and earthly realms, but also underlines the importance of perseverance in faith and prayer. Daniel's experience is a powerful testament that divine designs unfold in mysterious ways and often beyond our comprehension. In the New Testament, the figure of Michael, the archangel, continues to be a powerful symbol of the divine struggle against the forces of evil. In the book of Jude, verse 9, we find a specific mention of Michael as an archangel, narrating his confrontation with Lucifer over the body of Moses. In this episode, with the Lord's assistance, Michael emerges victorious, underscoring his position as a defender of divine will. The battle between Michael and Lucifer is not limited to this single event. In the book of Revelation, John describes a celestial war of epic proportions. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But they were not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. This passage illustrates the definitive fall of Satan, cast out of heaven along with his followers. The figure of the great dragon, the ancient serpent, a representation of Satan, is banished to earth, marking a critical shift in the dynamics of the spiritual conflict. Michael, as the commander of the heavenly army, establishes himself as God's principal warrior, leading his forces against Satan's hordes. This war in heaven, a fight between Michael and his angels against Satan and his fallen followers, symbolizes the incessant confrontation between good and evil. God employs his infallible and powerful celestial servants to defeat Satan's weary and ill-prepared army. Satan's inability to prevail and the loss of his place in heaven reinforce the supremacy of God's angels and the inevitability of their victory. The supremacy of God's angels in the spiritual realm is clearly evidenced, marking a definitive distinction between them and the demons. This division reflects not just a difference in power and strength, but also in purpose and loyalty. As illustrated in Psalms 103.20, angels are described as mighty in strength that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. This passage underscores not only the strength of the angels, but also their obedience and dedication to divine will. In any spiritual confrontation, God's angels are portrayed as always prevailing. They are entities that never fail, a guarantee of victory and protection for the faithful. This characteristic makes them supreme guardians of the saints, divinely powerful beings that are beyond any opposing force. The belief in the invincibility of angels provides comfort and security to believers. 
It represents the idea that despite challenges and adversities faced, there is an unfailing celestial force that guards and protects God's followers. The strength of the angels is such that nothing in the earthly or spiritual realm can match or effectively oppose them. As we together unveil the mysteries of Michael the Archangel, you have just embarked on an extraordinary journey through hidden truths and astonishing revelations. But remember, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There is much more waiting for you on our channel, where each video is a new adventure into the unknown, full of secrets and discoveries. If you felt the power of these stories and wish to continue this fascinating journey, don't forget to subscribe now. Comment below which part impacted you the most and share this video so that others can also unravel these mysteries. By liking and sharing, you help us bring even more incredible content like this. Join us.